Hello, appraisers. This is Brandon with Spark for Appraisers. And as you may know, we are building a tool right now to help appraisers with adjustment support. And in that tool, there is a lot of math that's going to be going on. And there are a lot of different methods that we're going to allow appraisers to use to calculate adjustment support for the adjustments that they want to use in their appraisal report. Now, this isn't some magical holy grail tool that tells you exactly what your adjustments should be. This tool basically runs through a whole bunch of different math using a whole bunch of different methods. And it tells you, okay, based on this method, here's what the adjustment would be. Based on this method, here's what it would be. And you as the appraiser, the expert in the market, have to go in and decide, okay, this number seems legit. This number is way out of whack. And you utilize the data that you find to be relevant. So in this series of videos that I'm making now, we're gonna cover all of the different methods that this adjustment tool is gonna to use and basically explain to you in general terms, and sometimes we'll dive into details, but in mostly general terms, how each of those methods work. Now, there, this tool is gonna to use several different kinds of regression. It will use paired sales or matched pairs. It will use sensitivity. It will use group data depreciated cost, and it may also include a few other methods. So this video being the first one, we're going to cover the very basic, simple regression. Um, so a lot of people like regression, a lot of people don't like regression. It definitely, it has its place, but it also has its downsides. Now there are a lot of different kinds of regression. In this video, we're going to be covering just simple regression, which is also known as ordinary least squares regression. And that is what the majority of appraisers use when they're coming up with a quick and dirty way to arrive at an adjustment using regression. Okay, now keep in mind, we are gonna dive into ordinary least squares regression, but this video is not meant to be a deep dive. It is not going to cover all the formulas and exactly how we calculate everything in ordinary least squares regression. Basically what we're doing is we're showing you broadly speaking, how it works and what it means and how you can use it to help yourself with adjustment support. In the process of doing so, we're gonna make some charts. You can see how to do it in Excel if you wanna do this yourself. Um, by all means, you do not need to use any tool that I'm creating. You can just use the information in this video to you know, do it yourself. Let's get into it here. So essentially what you're looking at here is a screen in Sparks Market Analysis. Now, this screen right here is charting over time. So you can see the dates down here is charting price. And so a lot of times an appraiser would want to chart price using time to show whether prices are increasing, stable, or declining. And if you run ordinary least squares regression on that data, it can give you a decent idea in some cases whether or not things are actually going up or down. Um, and so that's what Spark does, basically. What this trend line that you're looking at here is essentially the line that's made to fit this data based on ordinary least squares. Now, first of all, what is least squares mean? It, it, essentially, the reason it's called least squares is because, and this might sound a little complicated in the beginning, it's minimizing the, diff, the square of the error. So it's minimizing the square of the error. Now, first question might be, what is the error? So first, let's define some terms here. So when we're talking about ordinary least squares regression, we're talking about a bivariate regression. And what that means is it uses two variables. Pretty straightforward and simple. And in this case, our variables are time and price, or sale date and sale price. And so, on the x-axis, we have our independent variable. And on the y-axis, we have what's called our dependent variable. And so the way a statistician would look at this is they would say, okay, so I've plotted all this data out. Now I can predict that based on the sale dates, I can predict the sale price. Now, um, based on this information. So I, I know that I can draw this line through this data Again, I got this line fitted to this data based on ordinary least squares. And this line tells me that I can predict with some accuracy 
based on a date what the sale price is going to be. Now, as appraisers, we don't look at it like that. We're not saying, okay, I know that I can predict that on December 1st, if I take December 1st and go right up to where that line is, I know my sale price is going to be whatever that is, $270,000. That's not really how we think of it. The whole reason we do this is to try and decide how much things are going up or down or if they're going up or down. Um, but to a statistician, when they're using regression, for the most part, they're using it to predict things. So they can say, okay, I know that if I plug in March 1st, I can predict that a sale price will be right around here. Now, it might be higher or lower in reality, but on average, it's going to be right around here. Um, so that's kind of the purpose of this. And for us, when we plug in this line, we say, OK, I can see that that line is going up when it goes from left to right. It's kind of increasing. Um, now, I know because Spark tells me that it's increasing at 0.7% per month. But if I wanted to look a little deeper, I could look at that which I'll show you in a minute, and it will tell me how much it's increasing every single day. So ordinary least squares regression will show you that. Now let's get back to what we mean by minimizing the square of the error. So the error is the difference between the actual price and the fitted price or the predicted price. So this dot right here is an actual sale that took place in my MLS, um, and it took place right around May 1st and it sold for $230,000. Now our regression line says that based on all these data points that it would predict that a property that sold on May 1st would actually sell for right around $260,000, not 230. So the difference there, let's just say I'm accurate in my guess that this is 260,000. The, the difference is 230 minus 260,000. So the difference is negative $30,000. And then if you square that, you're basically taking negative $30,000 and squaring it. And so you're going to get a really big positive number, whatever that is, nine, 90 million or something like that. I don't know. So um, you take the square of the error, and that's what this is doing. You're minimizing the square of the errors. So there's basically no other line that I could draw through these data points that would better minimize the square of the error. And in general, um, and in, in this case, that, that's kind of how variance is defined. And so you get the lowest variance possible. What that also means is the difference between the error, I should, uh, let me start over, the error or the difference between the actual data point and the predicted price or the actual price and the predicted price, which is by the way called a residual, if I were to add up all of these residuals, and let's just go and show you an example of what I'm talking about here. Let's go here. Bear with me. So I'm going to just draw, whoops, let's just draw a chart. Excuse my not straight lines. And let's say we're just going to put a bunch of points here. Okay. And then I'm going to draw a line. Let's say this is my line that best fits the data. And now, just to kind of illustrate the residual, the residual is the difference between the actual point and the line. So I draw this, this, this. Now there's a, that's kind of a big one. That has a big diff, a big error. Just going to finish drawing these out. A couple left. Okay, so these red lines are the residuals. And if I square those, that's the square of the error. So um, it once I draw that line you, that was fitted using ordinary least squares regression, or we can just call it from now on simple regression. We'll just call it simple regression. Um, these residuals if I were to add them all up, now keep in mind, this number, because this is above the line, that's a positive number. This dot down here, it's below the line, so that's a negative number. Positive, positive, negative, 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 positive, negative, positive. So if I add all those numbers up, I get exactly zero when I using this simple regression fitted line. Um, if I add them up, I get zero. If I take the average, I get zero. That's how it works. That's what happens when you minimize the square of the error, essentially, is when you add up your residuals, you get zero. And so that's this line. 
Um, so now we kind of have some uh, context. Down here we have what's called the independent variable. And over here we have the dependent variable. And the way a statistician would look at it is they would say, okay, I can use all this data here on the x-axis to predict what the price is going to be. And again, like I said, that's not really how appraisers look at it, but that is statistically kind of what's happening. So now if I go back to Spark, let's just do this. I can click show data. And so this line right here, that's the fitted line drawn through these points. If I click show data, Spark shows me the actual equation to draw that line. So it's y equals mx plus b, most stuff we did in algebra one. Um, so the slope of that line is this number right here, 5562. What that means is that for every day that goes by, the sale price increases by $55.62. Now, another way to think of that is I can take that 5562, multiply it by 30 days, and I could say, okay, for every month, things are increasing at $1,700 a month. Or for every year, things are increasing $20,000 over the year is how an appraiser might use this data. Um, so essentially this line tells me that for every day that goes by, things are increasing at about $55 to $56. Now, please don't take this as me saying, that's a for sure number, that that's you know gospel truth, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that based on simple regression, that's what that means. Um, I'm not saying anything else as far as how you should draw conclusions or telling you how to decide what your time adjustment should be or anything like that. I am saying you can get data that could help you support an adjustment this way. And so another way to look at this would be to say, let's do it on GLA. Okay, so let's open up. I'm going to pop open an Excel spreadsheet here. And let's just say we plot out the GLA of properties and the price that they sold at. So I'm just gonna type in some numbers here. So those are some GLAs of five sales that sold. And let's just say these are the actual sale prices. Okay, so these are five sales their sale price and what their above grade GLA was. Now what I can do in Excel is I can just plot these points out because the purpose of this video is not necessarily to go into all the math. So let's just let Excel do it. And this is a way that you can use Excel to just do this yourself. So we're gonna use GLA as our independent variable. So that means this is gonna be on the X axis and the price is the dependent. So it's on the Y axis. So let's do this. I'm gonna say insert a scatter plot, choose that one, and here we go. So here's a scatter plot. Let's make it a bit bigger here. So these are those five sales plotted out. Now what I can do is I can add a trend line. And when I do that, this is the tr fitted line that fits this data using ordinary least squares regression. That's what Excel is doing right here. Now if I click this, I can also click more options. There we go. So now I can set, display the equation and display, well, let's just display the equation for now. So I've got this here. And so this is telling me, this number is very similar to our other number, but they are not related. So uh, essentially this is telling me that for every GLA or every square foot I go up, the price goes up by $56. That's the slope of the line, $55.92 or $56. Now, there's a lot more that goes into it, but essentially in theory, that is how you can use simple regression or ordinary least squares regression to help you support an adjustment. Um, now, in this case, we're talking about a GLA adjustment. And before you you know, jump into the comments and tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, Keep in mind, I understand we're only looking at five sales here. There's a, there's a lot more that goes into this, but I'm just, broadly speaking, this is how you use simple regression to get support for an adjustment. Now, 
to get into all the caveats here, first of all, are you looking at enough data points? Now, normally we'd wanna have many more than just five here. Um, if you go and look at what statisticians are saying now, typically, and I know many of you took classes where they told you you gotta have 30 points of data. Um, most statisticians, if you do a search now, will tell you basically 10 data points per variable is the minimum. So that doesn't mean you're getting great, super accurate results with 10, but it is the minimum. Um, go and do your own research on that. Uh, don't just trust me, but that's that's what I'm seeing. And then, so if I, let's say I did have good data and let's say I had 50 data points and I had $56 a square foot was my um, uh, number from simple regression. Now, does that mean I just go and use it? Definitely not. That is a number you can use as either a starting point or to, along with a bunch of other analyses. Um, but I would not just use this solely as your method for support. Now, like I said, you can do this with virtually anything. You could use ordinary least squares regression with lot size, with quality, swimming pool, bedrooms, bathrooms, all that kind of stuff. Um, and Another thing you always wanna do is you're the expert in the area, so you wanna make sure you're getting a reasonable number. Now, I'm gonna give you one more example of how why this number might not be a good number to use. So let's say we're just gonna call this $56 a square foot would be my adjustment. Now, do you really wanna use that as your adjustment? When it comes to simple regression like this, we're only looking at one independent and one dependent variable. There were a lot of other variables went, that went into the sale price of this house, this house that sold for 200,000 and had 2,000 square feet. There were a heck of a lot of other variables that went into that. This GLA is just one of them. And so when you're dealing with something that we call covariance, meaning as your GLA goes up, maybe something else is going up too. So maybe uh, for every, square foot that my home size increases, I also increase a square foot of lot size or something, you know, just on average. Then we have, we might have covariance. Typically larger lots are worth more in most areas. So um, you could have covariance as my houses are getting larger, my lot sizes are also getting larger. So this 56 dollars might also include other things like lot size going up or quality going up or garage count going up or whatever. So just be careful of that. Typically, when you're talking about least square regression, this would be a number, assuming everything else being equal, you have good data, you got a decent number of data points, all that, then this would be a good number that would be a high end of what you might adjust for. Um, not necessarily the number you want to adjust for, but ordinary least squares regression would give you a good number that would be a high end of the range of what you might want to adjust for. So if you were saying, okay, um, maybe I, I would adjust somewhere between 40 and 50, let's just call that $56 a square foot, then yes, um, 56 would be a good number to be as your high. Your actual number you might use might end up being 45 or 48 or 50 or whatever, but 56 might be a good number as a starting point for your high end of the range, and then you can work from there. Okay, I have rambled enough. Thank you everybody for watching. I uh, hope this helps at least a little bit. Again, you can do this with other features. doesn't just have to be GLA. Just to cover it one more time to show you, for those of you who care to do this yourself, and let's just go ahead and add a couple more data points in here. Let's say 2200 was 212, and let's say we also had 2250, and that was 220. That one jumped up more. Now, all I do is I just highlight that data. I click Insert. I go to the scatter plot icon here and click that. I click this one. There's my data points. And then I click this little plus button here in Excel. I say, yes, add the trend line. And then I go here to this little arrow and I click more options. And then you can see display equation. And that's our equation. And so now it's saying $62 is essentially what could in theory be my adjustment. Again, might be the very high end, but that is the number. So anyways, that's how it works. Thanks again for watching.